Hello and welcome to this video tutorial, Calculating Commissions Part 1. The default commission reports in Service Desk are based on the rate of earnings setup and the sales journal entries. The sales journal has four categories of funds, merchandise, parts, service call, and labor. In the rate of earnings report found at Alt-F2, you have four matching fields for commissions. This allows you to be flexible on the type of commissions your technicians earn. You may enter percentages or whole dollar amounts to be earned in the four categories of funds. You may also specify a different commission amount to be applied to jobs that are warranty or tax exempt as designated by their quick entry templates. On standard jobs, for example, you may want to give the technician 5% of parts sold, but on warranty jobs, none. Or you may choose to give the technician 10% of service calls for standard COD jobs and a flat $20 on warranty jobs. Here, you'll also choose if the technician receives his commission when the job is complete or when you get paid for the job. Let's open the sales journal for further explanation. The shortcut is Shift F3. When looking at a line in the sales journal, you have the date the entry was made, followed by the technician's initials. This is how Service Desk determines which technician gets credited with this entry. Next, you'll have the job name. If this entry contains a high volume client abbreviation, Service Desk will reference the quick entry template to see if this record falls under warranty or tax exempt status. Following this, you have the invoice number and then the four fund entries. The first being merchandise, the second parts, the next service call, and finally labor. These numbers are what Service Desk will calculate the commission percentage on. The last column shows the pay code type. A pay code 2 entry is a build entry. If you choose to pay your technicians when the sale is entered, he will earn commission off of pay code 1 and pay code 2 entries. A pay code 3 entry is the payment of a previously billed job. If you choose to pay your tax when you get paid, he will earn commission off of pay code 3 and pay code 1 entries. Depending on how you give commissions, this may be an argument for or against adjusting the value of an AR record. For example, some manufacturers give a kickback on certain claims. If your technician received commission on $100 of parts and the manufacturer kicked back 10% of that and you adjust the accounts receivable record, the technician will receive an additional commission on that changed AR. Alternatively, if an AR is adjusted negatively, the technician will lose the previously earned commission. For example, you can see that KM originally would have received a 15% commission on $165.60 in labor, but there is a corrective entry below that of negative $71.87, meaning he'll end up with a net 15% commission on $93.73. If you do not want your technician to receive commission on this kickback, you may choose to either A, not adjust the AR, or B, change the tech initials to OF for office so the entry is not included in the technician's commission. If we look back at our accounts receivable records, we can see based on our setup that this technician will receive 10% of parts sold on this job and a $20 service call. Some companies have commission and SPIF programs that are very complex. The SPIF program will be discussed in another video. This concludes this video. Thank you for watching Calculating Commissions Part 1.